everybody, it's convention Saturday and we wish that you guys were here with us. So an upside of a virtual convention is that we get to give you a virtual tour. Ta-da! We picked uh, six stories to tell you this time, hoping to tell you stories of inspiration and community and connection. Of legend, family, and destiny. I think it's gonna be fun. You ready? Yeah, let's go take a tour. Every ventriloquist has an inspiration, someone who inspired you to get started in the first place. For Jimmy Nelson, that was Bob Evans and his dummy, Jerry O'Leary. Mm -hmm. In the magnificent biography, uh, Jimmy Nelson's Celebration, 70 Years of Laughter by Tom Ladshaw, uh, he outlines the specifics about how the relationship with Jimmy and Bob evolved over time. Mm -hmm. So the short version is that Bob Evans was performing in Chicago in the 1940s and he was doing four shows a day. Well, Jimmy didn't just go to one show, he would go to all four shows, watching him, studying him. And the result of that was that they were, he, he learned three major things that changed his career as a ventriloquist. One of them was he changed the name of his dummy to Danny O'Day. After seeing Jerry O'Leary, that was his third Irish boy that he was familiar with. Charlie McCarthy, Jerry Mahoney, and then Jerry O'Leary, he thought they all had to be Irish names. So he changed his dummy's name to Danny O'Day, the name we all know. Mm -hmm. Second was the use of a falsetto voice. Mm -hmm. uh, Jerry O'Leary had that and Jimmy was inspired to raise Danny's voice so that's the source of that. And then finally was the whole attitude of Danny O'Day. Uh, Jerry O'Leary was kind of a smart aleck kind of kid and Jimmy really liked that effect so that is uh, how the personality of Danny O'Day was impacted. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. I'm sure that you have inspirations and we hope that you will share with us your stories of those events who inspired you to get started, just like Bob Evans and Jimmy Nelson. Absolutely. Let's go see another one. Okay. So one of the things that we strive for here at Ben Haven is connection. And we hope that all the ventriloquists feel connected to the museum. Shorty Jones here, used by Augustus Rapp, is a great example of that. Yeah, Augustus Rapp and Mr. Berger were really good friends. Mm -hmm. And when uh, Augustus sent Shorty to the museum in 1957, it was with this great uh, connecting note. He said, here is Shorty, my only son. He was a good boy for 50 years. If he ever talked back to me, it must have been my fault. <laughs> Give him a nice warm place by the bathroom. By the bathroom. What bathroom? <laughs> in response, Mr. Berger said, uh, you may be assured that Shorty will be taken care of like one of our own children. And in fact, Mr. Berger even sent uh, Augustus Rapp a check to cover the shipping, but said that the, the sentimental value of uh, Shorty cannot be estimated. Because really, to a ventriloquist, mm -hmm. your dummy is priceless. Yes. We hope you feel as connected to Vent Haven as Augustus Rapp did. Yeah. Let's go find another one. I got one. As all of you know, Vent Haven isn't a local collection or even a national collection. Vent Haven is an international representation of all of the history of ventriloquism. Mr. Berger worked very, very diligently to communicate with ventriloquists from around the world so that Vent Haven would represent the entire community of the art. Yes. Takachan here is a great example of that. She was used by Megumi Takahashi from 1981 until 2001 and then donated in 2002. Megumi studied under Reverend Noda, who is the father of modern ventriloquism in Japan, essentially the Edgar Bergen of their country. Very cool. Yeah. Let's do another one. Yeah, here we go. One of the legends in ventriloquism history was Fred Ketch. This is his dummy, Jerry J. Jerry. Mm -hmm. In news events in 1975, when Fred Ketch passed, Walt Berlin wrote a tribute and he described Fred Ketch. He said that he had an unusual skill. He was self-taught, but he was able to do a double voice and even triple voice harmony without any artificial aids. And he did the act that way for years. In the 1960 Oracle, the entire act is described. And the way that it would end was that Fred and Jerry would be on stage at the end of the act to sing How Dry I Am. And at the end, the last stanza, the last chorus, uh, his stage partner Edith would come out and she would actually take Jerry J. Jerry off stage with her and Fred would stay using that double voice to finish out the song. I'm gonna try at this time. 
to demonstrate the double voice or the triple voice when the three of us are on at the same time, singing Sweet Adeline. <clears throat> Sweet Adeline. My Adeline. My Adeline. My Adeline. At night, dear heart. incredible achievement. <laughs> that is an amazing, an amazing talent. I've got another dummy I'd like to show you. Come okay, on, let's go. One of our favorite dimensions of the Vent Haven collection is the sense of family that is here. Mm -hmm. And this dummy, Tommy Wood, is a great illustration of that. Tommy Wood was used by ventriloquist Gordon Kibbe in the 1940s and 1950s. Uh, Gordon Kibbe corresponded with W.S. Berger for decades and they became really good friends. Mm -hmm. This beautiful Marshall arrived in 2016 and was donated by Gordon Kibbe's daughter, Alva Hebel. It was a very emotional donation. And Tommy had been in her family her whole life. It was her connection to her dad. So it was very emotional for us as well because we know what is being asked of us, to care for a family member, to preserve the legacy, and to keep alive the memory of the ventriloquist represented here. This is George. He's one of two figures in the collection used by Norman Norton, who retired from ventriloquism in 1953. When he stopped doing vent, Norman Norton gave George and the other figure to his son Jack. That's a really common narrative here at Vent Haven, where the ventriloquist will give his dummies, his or her dummies, to a child. Uh, the best part about the story, though, is what happened next. 60 years later, in 2013, I got an email from the nursing home where the son had been a resident, and they found documentation there where the son had decided that the best place for George and the other dummy were here at Vent Haven. I love the story of destiny that surrounds Vent Haven Museum. We hope that your figure's destiny is here in W.S. Berger's fabulous collection. Thanks for watching. We hope seeing these stories helps you feel a greater sense of community and connection to Vent Haven Museum. We can't wait to see you at Convention 2021. Bye.